Hey, what's going on, guys? So I've been playing um, the new Zelda Echoes of Wisdom a uh, pretty, pretty good amount um, the last little bit here. Um, I did a video about my hype for it, and uh, I think it has really met my expectations. I don't know about you, but it's like a really kind of a cool combination of the classic Zelda formula and the Breath of the Wild more open exploring formula and the echo system is fantastic. So I actually wanted to go over some cool tricks and echoes that you can get really early game. I'm not gonna have like anything spoilery, like no bosses or anything. I'm just gonna be showing echoes you can get like right after the intro dungeon. Basically, if you start the game, you go in, there's a little intro kind of thing, shows you how to play, and then you can just kind of go explore. And honestly, you can explore most of the map, especially with some of these weird echoes uh, and some of these weird tricks. So I just want to show you some of these cool things and uh, and let and you know maybe learn something, um, and we can see what you know kind of the the weird stuff that it's like it's intended but like not specifically told to you. So without further ado, let's jump in. So the first thing I want to talk about is the bed. Everyone knows the bed. The bed is the, one of the first things you get. You can make ladders, it's stairway to heaven, and you can also heal yourself with the bed. Now, one thing, and this is kind of a minor thing, there are several different versions of the bed that heal you for more and more amounts of hearts in the game. Um, but there's one thing that can speed up the process just a little bit. Here, let me show you what I mean right here. So as you can see, the bed itself heals you pretty slowly. I mean, it, it's not the fastest thing. It's, you know, one tick every couple of seconds. But if you press A every time your healing happens it, and, then, and then rest again, it kind of resets it. I'm not saying it's much faster, but it is a little faster, especially when you get the later beds that um, heal more. Basically, just keep pressing A, uh, you know, heal, jump up, go back down, and it just, it saves a little bit of time, and, you know, it's a little thing that I don't think many people know about. Now, the next thing I want to show you is actually, I didn't think this actually was an enemy, <laughs> um, and, and definitely didn't think it was an echo, but it's like this platform called Plat Boom. Um, very, very useful, and like I said, I'm still early game, so I can only make one of these at a time. I'm sure later on you'll be able to make more, maybe get even higher, but this is a great way for vertical um, height uh, gaining, especially in like the kind of 2D sections, and I'm going to show you where to get it. Now, you go to this kind of little cave north of the Gerudo village. Now, the thing is, is how to kill it. I tried a ton of different enemies, uh, echoes, and I could not figure anything out except for those little spinning laser eyeball turrets. Um, for some reason, they do the job. Just, uh, you know, you can get one of those. They're, they're in early dungeons. They're not very hard to find. But you get one of those, and you can use it to uh, to basically shoot lasers at the plat boom, and then the plat boom is yours. I'm telling you, this thing is really cool. It'll really help your game out for sure. Now, I'm going to show you something that you're just going to have to kind of believe me on, only because I don't have enough like points to make multiple summons here. But in the swamp area, you can get these frogs that when you summon them, they make rain. And it makes it to where any lightning uh, summon has a big ball of lightning around it. Um, it just kind of stinks because, like I said, I don't have enough points because I'm so early in the game where I can't do it myself. But it's still a neat thing. I wanted to point out to you guys. So a cool way to get around, uh, especially like in big wide open areas like the desert, are these little armadillos. You can shoot one and link up to it and then let it pull you around like a little car. Um, they only get a certain amount of distance, so you might have to like just repeat the process over and over again, but still, pretty good way to travel. A lot faster than walking, that is for sure. Now, you know, I just happened to stumble upon these enemies while doing the armadillo thing, and it made me think, you guys probably want a good early game uh, combat echo, and I tell you what, the Wolfos is kind of it. The only thing this thing does not do well on is flying enemies that stay up in the air too long and enemies with shields. But you can see right here, he does work, and they are right in the Hyrule field pretty early in the game. Um, you know, you just kill one with like a crow or something, just keep your distance because they are kind of annoying. But once you get one, you can use one of them to fight the other ones, and they're pretty great. I mean, like I said, in general, this is like kind of my go to combat echo uh, especially early game um, there are some stuff that I've unlocked later that I can't even use yet so I'm excited to see what that's all about but like I said for for the most part I use the wolfos in standard battle 
Now, I want to show you a weird trick for getting around. It's like, I don't know what you call it. I'm just going to call it the bird meat trick. Uh, essentially, think about, you know, like the old kind of cartoon or whatever where you're on the back of a donkey and you have a stick with a carrot on it and then that gets him to walk forward. That's the same concept here. You basically summon a bird, any bird, um, and then you link to it. And then you drop a meat, either a hunk of meat or in my case I'm using the grilled fish. Um, and you pick it up and it makes the monster want to go after it. And then you can, you know, link yourself to the monster and basically it now pushes you around and you are a jet plane. <laughs> uh, really cool to get around. You can't really control it. Essentially, you're just going to go in a straight line. But it is a neat way to get around. And it's one of those like weird things. Like I said, this is the kind of stuff I don't know if it was strictly intended, but definitely works. Now something that is intended and is extremely early game, uh, definitely like must do, must do, must get. Uh, right in the beginning in like one of the Hyrule fields there's these black spiders and if you summon one and link yourself to it, um, it will climb up walls and you can get huge like vertical gains. It's great in dungeons, it's great in the 2D sections, it's great in the overworld exploration. I'm telling you, I feel like I've gone to places I wasn't supposed to, but then again, this game is like super duper free, so you can really do what you want. But I'm telling you, these spiders are super worth getting, really good for uh, early game traversal. Now, I wanna show you a really good um, echo to get for water combat. Maybe even the best, I don't know. I, the, the only other dungeon I've done besides the main one is a water style dungeon and this thing was a godsend. But essentially it's this shark. Now if you look at your map, it's like over in this area in the big like Zelda, uh, Zelda, Zora Lake. That's uh, it looks like a ship. You go over there, I mean, you just kind of sneak your way over there and try to get on the ship without dying using beds. But then once you're up there, just drop whatever kind of enemy does damage as a drop in. I'm using these urchins. Just keep dropping the urchins, a thousand of them. Eventually this thing will die. And when it dies, you get a sweet echo. This thing destroys anything in the water. It is like 10 out of 10, super duper good. Now, I'm going to show you how to get an echo that I think is like super powerful, but I can't even use it yet. Um, like I said, I've not progressed very far in the game, uh, at least not far enough to be able to summon this guy. And that's the uh, Lionel um, enemy. Uh, I will say there are different ways to beat it. Uh, you know, you could go in there with your sword mode and some defense potions and really just go at it and battle of attrition. Uh, what I ended up doing is, uh, is, is, well, you'll see. Well, first off, you go to the, um, kind of, uh, woods area and you have to follow these footprints. So, once you follow the footprints, basically the U, the bottom of the U shape is pointing in the right direction. You have to follow them all. You have to walk over them or you have to restart from the beginning. So just follow the exact same path I'm doing. And once you get to this area, he's going to be like in this little wooded arena. What I did, and be careful because he can jump up here, is I summoned some beds and got on top of these trees. He can jump up there and get you, but that same trick I pulled with the shark, I kind of pulled with him but modified. I dropped these little electro jellies on him, kind of run away, run back, drop one, run away, run back, drop one. It takes forever, but it will kill him. And like I said, you get it as an echo. I just can't use it yet, so I can't say if he's super good or not. But uh, I do believe he's one of the higher cost ones, so I'm wanting to say that he's worth your time. I wanted to end this with uh, kind of two more little tricks. I mean, these are, these are one's really cool and one's useful sometimes. The one that's really cool is the crow enemies that really don't seem like they're worth that much, especially because they're better bird enemies. The crows have a special ability that they don't really outright say, and that is when a crow kills an enemy, it blows up into rupees and then you can get a lot of money. So I'm not saying this is the best way to farm money. There are way better ways to farm money in this game. But if you want some rupees and there's a bunch of weak enemies around, just have some crows on you, summon them, they'll explode into rupees. It's pretty sweet. Uh, and then one other thing I really wanted to kind of show, um, especially in some of the more wooded or grassy areas or dungeons, the little fire guys spread fire big time. There's several enemies that cause fire. Uh, one of the ones you get super early are these little fire slimes. But you set one down and it will just make a wildfire, destroying everything and spreading, killing anything in the grass. Pretty good, but you gotta be careful because you yourself will also catch fire. But these are just some cool tricks. 
um, that I have found early game. I'm talking like early, early game. Like I said, I've beaten one other dungeon besides the intro dungeon. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think because there's some there's some really cool stuff in this game, and I know it's only gonna get cooler. So that's just a handful of weird little Zelda tricks. Um, you know, if you guys have some cool ones, put them in the comments down below. I'd really like to kind of learn more tricks on the game. I, like I said, I'm super early. I've beaten, besides the intro dungeon, I've beaten one other dungeon. That's it. So I, I, I don't think I'm very far in the game. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to keeping on going. So like I said, if you guys have any cool weird little tricks like this, let me know uh, in the comments down below. And, uh, you know, let's explore Zelda together. And that's going to do it for us today, guys. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't, please do. It'd be phenomenal. But as always, my friends, take it easy.